Hello. Hi. Dad? Yes. Or as you are more widely known, Mr. Hasu P. Shah, thank you for joining us today as part of the ULI Next Visionary Leader Series. The series targets rising leaders in our industries, executives between 35 and 45 years old, and hopes to impart some insight into their decisions and their career from what you have learned and seen through your career. And across the last 30 years, you've developed, managed, or owned over 100 hotels across the United States. You've created related businesses in general construction, in assisted living, hotel and restaurant management. And from very humble beginnings, an 11-room motel in Middletown, Pennsylvania, your company now owns luxury hotels like the Ritz-Carlton Georgetown or the Rittenhouse Hotel here in Philadelphia. You have resorts in Key West and Monterey, California. Your portfolio is focused in the gateway markets of New York City, Miami, Los Angeles, Boston, Washington, D.C. But it all started when you were about 40 years old, when you were a next leader. And you had recently acquired an 11-room motel in Middletown. Can you tell us, Dad, how it all got started? Well, uh, I was a chemical engineer working in the environmental field. And although I was working as an engineer, I really wanted to be on my own business where I can utilize my insight to develop for my family and for myself. So I always wanted to do something and re real estate market is the one I picked because of little bit of less risky in my mind compared to average investors might think, you know, real estate is the most riskiest business. But I felt, you know, it was a lot better for my family. That is interesting. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of stories of entrepreneurs being risk averse and willing to do anything, but in fact, you came to real estate and real estate entrepreneurship out of somewhat hedging your bets. Right. And you were an immigrant from India. Yes. I left India when I was only 19 years old because I wanted to become a chemical engineering and wanted to be, to have the degree from most forward country in the world, and that was America. So I came to US to get my degree. So when I started my high school, college, it was 19 to, I graduated in 20, when I was, within three years, I graduated from chemical engineering. Although I did not start my business right away, I allowed about 15 years to raise some money because I did not have any money or I did not have family background. So I raised, I raised my two sons. Our married life was settled and we had some fund in the savings account to start my dream, American dream. Hmm. And did you get started in hotels right away? Uh, well, initially, in order for me to help the fund, you know, I started buying single homes, fixed it up. Most of the homes I bought was from veterans foreclosures or FHA foreclosed. But I bought about five or six homes during the 10 years time, along with raising my family. But yeah, uh, so real estate was my, from the beginning, uh, I started in real estate. And within 10 years, I had about six homes, single homes, with two with in-ground pool. And we also bought some few unit apartment. So during that 10, 15 years, you know, I was not idle. I also earned my master's degree from the Penn State and collected these houses. 
And then the the first hotel property. What what did you know about hotels and motels? How did you how did you make that very first deal? Well, uh, what I did is I I made a lot of money out of those single homes, but it was not enough for me. So I thought that unless I go into the active business where I can make a lot more money. Renting homes were, as far as I'm concerned, it was a passive investment. But if you get into the active investment, which is a motel or restaurant, where your personal insight will be useful a lot more. And that is how I came across 11 room motel in Middletown and I just jumped into it without the knowledge of motel business hmm. or the American tourist business. But my feeling of learning process is not to go to college and learn. Unless you invest your dollar from your pocket, that is the fastest professor who can teach hmm. the business either real estate or any other business, you know. But as long as you have invested the money, you will learn very fast. <laughs> One of the most important lessons I've learned from you is partnership. We've, as I've learned from professors as well as from, from life, a lot of entrepreneurs seem to be one-man shows. A lot of businesses that become family businesses are, can sometimes be a little bit insular. But I've seen that you've always relied on very strong partners to grow your business, sharing not only the workload, but also the rewards of, of the hard work. How did you structure your, your very first partnership, for example, or some of your- Very work? first partner was, of course, my wife. And that is Harsha. Harsha and I had a common vision, hard work ethics, and common goals. So she was definitely my first partner. She, as well as both my sons, were very, very helpful during my previous 10 years of real estate rental business. But Harsha was a very good, operationally, she was a very good person. So that is why when we bought a bigger hotel, 125 rooms, my lawyer indicated that now we have to come up with the name of the company. Hmm. And I did, never thought about the company. So I suggested why not keep Hersha Enterprises, and because I was still working as an engineer, and Hersha was going to be the general manager of the 125 rooms hotel, and name was born out of that meeting with our attorney, Bill Gross. Hmm. Hersha. So that was my first partner, and. In the beginning, when I bought that, you know, we both had a very hard time. Even my wife, Harsha, had a little more hard time because initially the revenue was not doing that well as I projected. It took us about a year to get on the ramping period. But within a year, it started doing so well. And I decided to quit my job that now I can put in more effort in the hotel business. So I quit my engineering job in 1985. But when I came to hotel, really there was not much work for me to do because Harsha has set up such a beautiful operations and the employees she trained so well Really, there was not much work for me to do. So what do I do? I quit my job 
and not much space needed in the hotel. So I concentrated myself in growth of the company. And within three months, I purchased another hotel, which was about 67 room in Gettysburg. Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And that started doing very well. So I am like a, <laughs> I was like addicted person to, now we have to buy more and more, <laughs> even though I did not have money. So then I thought about that maybe what I should do is bring money with another acting partner. And I gathered about five partners during the five years period. And each partner were very successful in their engineering job or corporate America job, whatever. But my requirement to become my partner was to they have to quit their job, bring substantial equity to join me as a partner. I always was a major partner, but as hotel was, say, a couple hours away, I, I did not want to run around myself. I rather grow my company rather than operating those hotels. And that is where each and every partner who joined me they were in charge of the one or two, sometimes three hotels at a time. Hmm. And that is how our partnership has grown. And more than the number of hotels we own, I boast about my partnership. Each and every partner, including my first partner, we are very happy and we are all together and they are still working for the company, Harsha Group. So it seems like from those first kind of 15 years of, of the business, started 10 years after, 10, 15 years after you came to this country, you continued working in your kind of full-time job, um, investing on the side, working with your partners, you quit your job, focused on this business full time throughout the late 80s and through the 90s, growing kind of by the bootstrap, cash flow from operations, refinance, buy the next property. Right. And then you made the big transition in the late 90s to go to create a public real estate investment trust. Tell me about that transition. While we were growing as a public I mean, growing our hotels, you know, we, by the time 93, 94, we had about 14, 15 hotels. And my son, younger son, Neil Shah, <laughs> he happened to be going to the Wharton School of Business and he signed us up to develop the hotel. Uh, as a small business administration, he, he was assisting in that business small SBA financing and so when we went to Wharton, they wanted each and every partner to be attending the, those meetings and we had about three or four meetings. And they came up with the different ideas in order for us to grow the company. How should we raise the fund? Either through the private equity or going public and most of our partners decided to go to public. And my older son, Jay, from 95 to 99, he must have hit each and every investment banker doors to mm -hmm. somebody can sign us up as a, in, some investment banker would be willing to write, underwrite our company. But none of them were very much interested because we were very, very small. In the financial market, you know, when the, some uh, Anderson Strudwick, a small 
investment bank from Richmond, Virginia, was able to do it. They raised only $13 million for our company to go public. But <clears throat> so both my sons were very, very helpful even while they were in college or in their initial years. And was that transition to a public real estate investment trust a, a very challenging one once you were out and you were public? A lot of people think of private businesses and public businesses as being completely different environments. But I feel like you've been, we've been able to kind of maintain our values and our strategy across that period. How yes. were you able to do that? We became a public in 1999. But really, public, definitely, we had to learn different accounting system than what we were used to doing it, because they used the gap accounting. But otherwise, you know, everything that I did was an open book. There was no gray area in any business transactions. Of course, we had to learn Sarben Oxley, which was uh, during that time, and Dart Frank. But for us, you know, of course, it was a learning process, but you know, it was nothing different than what we used to do right from the day one as I went into the business. Yes, we did not have to change our core values or anything except start making money. That was our goal. And many of us at Hersha, all of us at the company, um, look to you as not only setting our values and instilling um, the values that then lead to our long-term strategy, but we also think of you as, um, as a real risk taker. Um, real estate itself is risky. Um, within real estate, hotels are particularly risky. You created a lot of value, and our company has created a lot of value by developing hotels from the ground up, even more risky. You've used leverage, and you've now gone through so many severe real estate cycles. How did you get through them all? Is there something that, that we can tell our kind of new aspiring young leaders about how to, to make your way through, through difficult times like those? I always believed in American economy. If you look at the last 100 years of American economy, the cycle goes up and down, up and down, and that very normal. So during when it goes down, that is the time requires the patience and the confidence in the economy and future. And that's what we did. Of course, during the down cycle, we had to tighten our wallet, work a little harder than we used to, but having the patience and working hard at it that helped us. I have gone through at least three or four cycles during my business of hotels. But every down cycle, we have been growing our asset value substantially. Especially if you look at our acquisitions, you know, 2009-2010, we doubled our asset value during that time, and that was even the worst time. Similarly, during 9-11 time, we really worked very hard at the Manhattan market, and currently, I would say we are probably the largest number of hotels in Manhattan market. But that all started right after 9-11. We had only one hotel at JFK Airport prior to 9-11. Currently, Harsha owns over 17 or 18 hotels 
in Manhattan. So today everything seems to make a lot of sense. You own the most hotels in New York than any other company in the world. You own the best hotel in your home state of Philadelphia, the Rittenhouse Hotel. But 30 years ago, you were still an immigrant. You were new to business. You were new to Pennsylvania. Um, you learned from the people around you, from what I've heard and learned from you. Mentorship is something that's very important to ULI and very important from what I understand of you to your life. Any individuals or any people in life um, that were great influences on you or any lessons that you could share with young people about how to look for mentors? Mentor is definitely an important person. I have few mentors in my life. But I have learned a lot from the normal people. Like I learned the restaurant business from waiter and waitresses. Mm -hmm. I am basically a vegetarian dieter. But how to make the uh, medium rare or steak, I learned from those guys. So I learned from all the normal human beings, say like in subcontractor in the construction industries, when we were building a hotel, I learned from them. And I created Harsha Construction. And Harsha Construction is the one who built the Hampton Inn Hotel in Philadelphia. Right down the street. Right down the street. So, Without any experience, first of all, like I said before, your own investment makes you learn fast, but I learned from the ordinary people. I did not have to go to the college to learn the construction business, but I learned from local. Those people are knowledgeable. I don't hesitate to ask them and let him think that I'm dumb. Learning from individual is a lot faster than really go through the college. That's very interesting. At, at times, our industry struggles with the idea that doing the right thing and making money are somehow mutually exclusive, or that working hard and having a strong family core are challenging. Could you tell me a little bit about the work-life balance that you've created, how you've remained so focused on the community? I remember growing up, you were more active, you were as active in the community as you are even today. You used to give it time and energy. Today you give it time, energy, and your personal resources. But how were you able to balance all of that? I think the human being, we, God has given us the life to live. So if nothing else, we owe to the God to help out to the God. God can do, he has created some disadvantaged people in this world for whatever reason. And I always felt from my childhood that it is our duty to spend some time for the third party, not for your own benefits, but for somebody else's benefit. And I believed in giving time for that effort. And, and that is true for right now also, you know, because anybody working hard, whether for, for the job that they are working, or they are working for their own business, they have a duty to pay back to the God. And that is, that is where the balance comes from. And that is where in each and every individual in the world should be balancing not only for themselves and their families, but also for the philanthropic work should be allocated certain time in their life. It's very inspiring. Dad, thank you for taking the time today to share your vast experience with the next generation of real estate entrepreneurs. 
You've had such a tremendous impact, not only on your sons and your family, but also the 5,000 plus team members at Hersha and the more than 10,000 guests we serve every night at our hotels. But I think even more so, I think your story and your willingness to share it all along the way, just like today, can truly change the world that we live in by, the changing, by changing the ways that we all live our lives. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you.